Oh, good day and welcome back. So in this video, I want to go over the to-do code that you saw in the previous, if you pull, pull on the code, you saw in the previous um, s section, but I didn't really get to go over. And that is how we update the to-do application so we can add the route and service, the routes, you know, the edit and new routes and so on, all those new things we've learned. And for our service, we're going to have these new set of met these methods. Um, a lot of them we didn't use before, but it just kind of builds on this idea that in our service, we're going to kind of encapsulate our business logic and hide away most of the dirty work. So it makes it simpler for the controllers to use. So let's jump in and take a look. We do. I want to go cover something. See, so far, our tasks haven't had its own ID. We have been using the index in the array to refer to the task we want to modify or edit or update. And that's not really that good. Because when we go to multi-user application, that location in the index of that object could change based on if somebody else removes something from that array. And you don't even have to use an array. You could just use a hash or something else as a collection for your objects. And so you really need to get away from this idea of just thinking about the index is the only way. So by having each object have their own unique ID, it's easier to track and you can say, I want to update this object, I want to delete this object just by specifying the ID. And you really don't have to worry about what type of data its um, collection is stored in. The other thing you can do is say, I want to update this particular object using this ID and just send the set of properties you want to update. So it makes it easier and better to scale because if your object is really big with, let's say, 10 fields and you only update in one, you can only say, um, send to the back end, this is the ID I want to update the object card sent to this ID and here's the field or these are the fields. So you don't have to always send back all the other fields just because um, you want the, the back end to have the entire object, okay? So it's much better. And so here are some of the advantages in terms of using ID versus index. I mentioned it before. You don't have to store your objects in an array. And if somebody changes the contents of that array, you're not gonna be in trouble because the location and change, okay? Okay, let's turn our attention now to playing with the updated application. So the old um, application uh, we we're working on so far, the item ones, not our to-do, um, pretty much functions a lot like our to-do application in the sense that you can add an item and you can update it and that sort of thing. But it didn't have all the bells and whistles of our to-do application. Our to-do application allows us to search for things and we have this idea of status you can set um, and of course description. And so all of this still worked the same way and you could put in details, but now um, you're gonna see that if when I click on edit, for example, we're using the route here. And it's a little bit fuzzy, sorry about that. But we have totally transformed our application to using um, routes and services and it works the exact same way. So what is really changed in our code? Let's kind of take a look and see what has changed. And I'm using this application here that's trying to diff the file. And you can see it's not very much that's changed between the files. And you can't see that file very clearly here. So it's best to just let's go and take a look um, at the apps file, which is the one that has most of the changes. All the other files didn't really change much. And you can see if we start at the top here, um, you can see our database service just basically has an array for storing our objects and this counter that's gonna be for keeping track of which the new, what is the new unique ID that we should be assigning to task. And so once we have that, then we have a function or init task function, which is just gonna create a new empty task. Uh, we can put on the form and then add it to all the collection of all the other tasks. And of course we can get all the tasks. And then our add task function here just simply assigns the, increment the ID, assign it to our task, and then push it onto our array. So nothing much there, nothing new. So once we move on to get task by ID, say we want to get a task to update it or edit it, for example, uh, we need to map, do a mapping from the ID to the index in our database. In this case, or we're storing our task in an array, so we still need to find that index, but that's not exposed to the user. All they get is a task ID, and so they ask us, hey, can I get this particular task with this ID? And then we use this worker function, get task index by ID, and it returns an index, or if it doesn't find it, returns minus one. And of course, we can't return anything to the user, so return null. And so notice there on line 72, we're making a copy. And again, this is an example of bringing our business logic down into um, the service to ensure that uh, we do the right thing, which is 
we always make a copy of the task before we give it to the user to manipulate. And if we look at remove, um, it's pretty straightforward. We just take that ID again, map it to the index, and then once we find it, we slice it off. And that's no problem. Um, update um, is a little bit more involved. Here, what we're doing is we're going to make sure that um, we have some valid things to change. So here, we want to enforce that oh, we have a title before we update it. And we're going to kind of keep track that hey, if we update the title, then the object was changed, object was changed. Um, if status was changed, then if we have a valid status, then we want to say that the object is changed. For direction, we, all we want to do is make sure that our, the, if we're going to change the direction, um, description, not direction, sorry. The description is different than whatever the description was before. So you're allowed to erase the description, um, but we're not going to change the object if you try to set the same description that was there. And then we return that the object was changed. And then this is our mapping function between task ID and finding the index. And you can look up the use of the find index function for array in the documentation. Finally, we have our controller, and there's nothing surprising here. They simply get injected with the task DB service, and then they use the appropriate methods. And again, nothing too fancy here. Um, take a look at it, and I think most of it, all of it will make sense. All right, so I was, ho I was hoping to make this, keep this pretty short, hence why it seemed like I sped through it, but you can slow it down, you can look at the code, and I think nothing really is new here compared to what we've done before. And so again, our application to now is a little bit, is more robust. We're kind of set for doing multiple users simply because we're not using the index and of course doing things with the remote storage. Um, we're not gonna get there quite n yet. Maybe we'll, we'll see what we'll do next, but we're not gonna go to the remote storage thing yet anyway. But thanks again for your time. And hope this was helpful and see you, subscribe, spread the word. Take care, bye.